Hey guys, um, little improvised stream here. First things first. Last week we did a stream and it was a good one. You guys helped me figure out how I was going to make some of the stuff that I was making. We improvised a whole bunch of crafts. It was a good time. Stream ended, went to bed. Next morning, went to go check it out, make sure, change the thumbnail and all that doodad. And the video was not done processing yet. This is a little unusual because usually um, these streams don't take that long to process because they're being done, you know, in the way that uh, YouTube wants them. So it's usually pretty quick. Well, I waited, day passed, two days passed. And here we are several days later, and that stream seems to be in an infinite YouTube processing glitch loop. The weird thing is, while I can't edit it, you, you don't see it on my channel in the listings, it doesn't come up in sub feeds, you can search for it and find it. If you go to it directly from the link, it exists and you can comment on it. It just isn't part of my channel. It's really weird and it's really annoying. I mean, it shouldn't matter. It's just a stream, whatever. We've been doing lots of them. But uh, we had a good time and the OCD in me wants it archived properly. So I've been looking like crazy for a way to fix it, trying to find an answer and have co been coming up with nothing. Basically, you can't contact YouTube about these things because they don't give a crap about some small channel's little problems. And nobody online seems to be much help. Reached out to several forums, to Reddit, to a whole bunch of places, and nothing. So, yeah, if you really want to see that um, that stream, you can search for it. Search for uh, sewer paper minis, Black Magic Craft stream, and uh, you'll find it. Um, but anyway. Such is life. Mm. So, just checking here. Something's going wonky again with the um, stream status, but whatever, I'm going to ignore that for now. Uh, one cool thing, and the reason I wanted to do this tonight, is that I got a new top-down cam. Uh, we had the problem with the iPhone and the app not working great back and forth and cutting out sometimes. So I ordered up this Logitech uh, C90, C920 HD webcam and it came in the mail today. It is cooked, hooked up directly to the computer via USB, so it hopefully shouldn't cut out. And it seems like the picture quality is pretty good. I mean, uh, the focus, I'm assuming it'll take a second, but is it gonna work? There we go. I mean, I don't know how this will look once YouTube you know, compresses it and whatnot, but on the OBS preview, the detail looks pretty friggin' sharp on this camera. So, um, anyway, this is the sewer setup we looked at last time with a few extra features. Uh, we got the tiles, we got the sloppy ass water inserts um, we got these vats which I am really happy about the way they turned out and on the last stream I decided to make this this kind of like causeway little catwalk deal and with the levers I ended up remaking them coming up with a different idea but basically we got one lever here with the turn wheel and a broken lever, which is um, relevant in the in the game I'm going to be using this for. I don't learn how to make this camera focus quickly. I don't know how you do it. How do you make this camera? There we go. 
it's all right. So with the levers there. And then I afterwards made it up two more of these little bridges. Uh, rather than painting them in a uh, kind of gunmetal iron uh, color like I normally would, I painted them more more brass and did some a little bit of green discoloring on them, which that doesn't show up on the camera too well. You can kind of see it there. They're pretty shiny though, because I hit everything with a gloss varnish to give it that wet look. Also got the uh, Man Shark minis on there. Sludgy ass bases. And this kind of abomination mutant thing on its base. I also decided to take all of my stone tiles and hit them with the gloss varnish too, just to make them a bit harder. Actually, the first thing I did is I decided to give them all a black wash and then hit them with the varnish. Um, I think I regret the, use, using the gloss varnish. I think the idea is right, but I think I'm gonna go over and hit them all with a, a satin just to take a bit of the glare off. It's a bit too shiny, so. So anyway, what's up guys? Uh, Chaotic, hello JP, hello Lex, welcome back. Joshua, what up? Um, Rewatching the tentacles video, then I got the notification that you went live. Have to do a bunch of work, but at least I get to watch you make some cool stuff. Yeah, tonight uh, I think I'm just going to do some a little bit of painting. It's not the most exciting, but who knows? Maybe we will end up improvising something neat. As usual on Black Magic Craft, we got to talk about the drink of choice tonight. I think that. Um, I drank this on here before, uh, Black Bridge Brewery Milk Stout. Uh, it's brewed uh, just a province over in Saskatchewan and it is quickly becoming one of my, uh, one of my more favorite drinks. So yeah, uh, just fixing something here. Are you guys getting uh, a decent signal tonight or is it cutting out and buffering like a son of a bitch because YouTube is telling me there's a whole bunch of buffering going on and usually I get a better connection than that so <coughs> let me know. Okay, let's make some room here. Always got to set up something cool to show you guys but then it's in my way. So we got these bridges, get those out of the way. Land sharks be gone. Okay. Now, realistically, I probably shouldn't be doing this tonight. I should be spending some time in my DM tome actually preparing for my game. But uh, I don't know. I seem to avoid that like the plague. It's always more fun and easier to just paint stuff. But at some point this week, I gotta do some real actual old school DM prepping. Josh says he's getting a bit of buffering, but he usually does, he's watching on the phone. Man, isn't isn't technology technology wonderful? Watching this live stream on your telephone. It's crazy. Whoa. Are you guys noticing any differences in the video quality from the in general? Like I'm trying to do this one in 720p instead of 480, and I don't know if there'll be an added improvement or if it's just gonna make, if that's what's causing the buffering or whatnot, so. But I think, I think I'm pretty happy with this camera. Like, 
It seems to be pretty good. So many screens, so many screens. Okay, so we got all these paper minis based up. I uh, already did everything with a coat of dark gray. So now I'm just gonna go in and do a bit of dry brushing. It's a bit of a lighter gray. And then these things can get like a brown wash. And we'll be good to go. I need some paper towel. Oh shit, are we out of paper towel? Wait, there's more. Just the worst being out of paper towel, but luckily we just went shopping. Lex says it looks better than last time. Awesome, good to know. Okay, I'm glad that the, the camera is a noticeable improvement. I mean, really, I only got it to avoid it cutting out, um, but if the detail is better, that makes it a little bit more of a justifiable expense. Because it wasn't a cheap webcam, guys. I, uh, I spent some money on it, and I'm glad that it actually is helping the situation. Um, so anyway, when I paint bases, I am no master mini painter. I usually just do a real simple dry brush and call it a day. Lately I've been using more washes on everything, so I'll probably hit these with a brown wash or something, just to make them a little bit more grimy. Hey Cyrus, what's up man? Awesome. Glad to know that we're coming through loud and clear. I still wish I knew why the last stream never finished processing, man. That totally chokes me. It's sitting there, you can watch it if you direct link to it, but it's not showing up in my, on my channel and I can't edit any of the info or thumbnails and I cannot find out how to fix it. So if any of you guys know a little bit more about that or have any, any ins to the technical side of YouTube, I'd love to know it, but I think that one is just going to be lost. Um, this one tonight is going to be a test to see if it does it again. However, I'm also at this, on this one, while streaming simultaneously recording the video to my hard drive, um, and I'm going to see if that screws anything up or if it, you know, how big the file is, whatever, just so that if that happens again, and it's like a particularly good stream, I will at least have a backup that I can re-upload if YouTube glitches out again on the archive. So, but I mean, man, like a two or three hour stream, I'm guessing that'd be a massive file. So I hope that I never have to re-upload one, but better safe than sorry. Uh, Amazon link uh, to the webcam. Uh, I don't, uh, I bought mine off Best Buy. Uh, but if you search for Logitech C920, you will find it. There are two top end um, Logitech webcams. Uh, basically, you, you go to like Best Buy or whatever's website and you look at their webcams, their HD webcams. There's two that come up as the most expensive, better ones. And I mean by most expensive, I think this one was like 120 bucks Canadian, so it's probably like 100 bucks American. And then there's one more that's a little bit more expensive that is a little bit better in some regards. It has a much wider field of vision, uh, but I watched a whole bunch of reviews and what I came to learn was that that one was geared more towards conference um, 
use, like boardrooms, has really nice wide uh, field of view so that they can see a whole table full of people. But it had a lot less features in terms of like zooming, focusing, color correction, that sort of thing, which would be geared more towards doing something like I'm doing or live streaming or just Skype or whatever. So all the reviews said that for basically what I wanted to do, this one, which was a little bit cheaper, was actually better suited. And I actually didn't think the wide field of view would even be a positive because like you guys just want to see what I'm working on. You don't need to see everything around it. I mean, it'd be nice, but you know, nice zoomed in detail is probably the most important thing. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. So you found the vid by searching for it. That's super weird. Um, and if you search for it, it shows up in the search results, like with no thumbnail, it's just blank. But yeah, it's really unusual. And really annoying. It was a little discouraging. It made me kind of not want to go online again. But we press on and hope that it was a one-time thing. I wish I knew what caused it though. Um, the only thing I can think of is that when you do these streams, you set, uh, when they're an event, you set a title for it. And then afterwards, like right after the stream ended, I decided to edit the title to add that we had made that sewer catwalk thing. And I wonder if I changed the title right at some weird moment when it was doing some, you know, digital magic or whatever saving and it got confused and, you know, it just got stuck. I tried changing the title back, but I don't even know if I changed it back to the exact thing that I would originally placed on there or if it didn't make a difference or whatever, but yeah. It's there if you feel like referencing it, you got to search for it. But it's a bummer because that was a super fun stream. It was kind of we did exactly what I hoped to accomplish with which the, with these, which is you know interactive crafting. It wasn't just me talking while doing stuff. We actually brainstormed, and that was awesome. Yeah, uh, actually, it's funny that you mention. Uh, Adam Savage and his watches. I watch tested all the time like pre starting this stream I would usually watch YouTube videos while crafting and often I would watch um, you know gameplay stuff or um, you know different like D&D crafting videos or whatever but I would often watch tested. I became totally obsessed with watching the Adam Savage like one day builds. Um, just fascinated, you know, by the projects he was doing and how he works. And yeah, he uses washes on absolutely everything. And so that got me kind of motivated to start trying it. I was always worried that it would ruin my uh, piece. I was kind of like shy about it, I guess. And I don't know, uh, I just bit the bullet and started actually hitting some things with washes and I realized that basically never does it um, make it worse and almost always does it make it better. So I've been getting pretty more ballsy with, this is brushes, shitty. Getting way more ballsy with the washes. That's why I actually went and took my old uh, tiles and hit them all because, I don't know, I thought it made them look a lot nicer. You know, making a channel for Halloween prop making, sweet. Um, yeah, if you need a good cam, um, 
I would say that this one this is the first time using it, but I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I think one thing about it is that with a lot of camera stuff, it's really important that you have good lighting. Um, when I was using the iPhone camera for a lot of stuff, it, it has a good picture if your lighting is really good. And luckily in this room, I do have very bright lighting to uh, work with, but most people don't. Anyway, this Logitech cam, I first tried it on my desktop computer, just plugged it in. First of all, I just plugged it in uh, into my, it's like a Mac Pro desktop. I didn't do anything. I just plugged it in and it just worked, opened photo booth to test it and it was up and running and it was in my recording studio which has a very poor lighting and it looked really good. Um, so I think it's a very practical camera for someone starting out. Although Keep in mind, it is a webcam, it's not a video recorder, so good for streaming. Um, I'm, I'm thinking if you would want to use it to actually record video, then you'd have to be plugging it into a laptop and using some external software to actually record your, uh, your video. Because it is meant as a streaming camera, right? So, something to consider. Um, I'm just going through on these and trying to be less lazy. Usually I just rush these and I would actually be calling them done by now. But I'm just hitting a few larger stones with a kind of tan color just to add some variance. C920 is 60 bucks US on Amazon. Yeah, that's a excellent deal, I would say. Things always cost more up here, and the exchange rate always plays a factor. But I was just happy to find it online and get it shipped to my door. Also, uh, by ordering it from Best Buy, I was allowed to, I was able to pay for it with PayPal, which is good because. The way I operate both this channel and my uh, my music business, which is you know much more of a legitimate business, um, all the money that I spend on it comes out of money that I've made from it, which is money that exists in PayPal form. Not to say that this channel has paid for a webcam. We ain't there yet, but it's started. But anyway. PayPal account is where I have all my music profit and stuff, so I like to pay for things out of that when I can. That way it's not coming out of, you know, general income, so to speak. All right. So a few of these rocks with some Okay, so I have the spinning wheel of death here. Let's see if this catches up. Okay, let me know if I cut a power cord wasn't actually plugged in, but we're back. So uh, hopefully. Hopefully, it didn't fuck things up too much.
Let me know when we're back here. Work in a f good lighting, that would be amazing. However, work out of a finish ranch basement layer, so both sunlight and overhead fluorescent. It's like a bloody animator's nightmare. Uh, the lighting I use in here is all fluorescent. Um, uh, this overhead lighting up here is LED, but the room light is all fluorescent, and that's where I um, film all the intro video stuff. You guys are a few minutes behind me. There's always a lag, but I think, I think I'm back. I feel like, I'm back. It's always something, eh? Can't be easy. So now, just deciding if I want to hit some of these rocks with another kind of color, change it up a bit more. All right, Cyrus says we're back. Whew! That was a close call. Can't believe I let my laptop battery die while streaming. I mean, I had it plugged in. I just didn't have it plugged in well, apparently. All right, so I got this kind of orangey brown that I'm gonna go in and touch a few more stones with on each of these. I need a smaller brush. I don't like that color. Um. What should we do instead? I don't like that color. Yeah, I'm gonna mix um, some of this tan in here. Yeah, that's probably a bit better. Yep, yeah, blame it on the man shark. That color is less retarded looking. I gotta learn where the new work area is on camera. It's a little bit different on this one than on this camera. The field of vision, I should say. But yeah, anyways, um, we're talking about Adam Savage and Tested. And I gotta say, that I love watching Tested. Um, however, I also find it horribly depressing to watch because it's kind of like watching a show about what I wish my life was like and what my life would be like if I was independently wealthy and able to make a living completely from doing the things I love. So it's always a little bit bittersweet watching that show. Also, I am really glad that uh, what's his name is gone from there. What's his name? Which one's Norm? There's the like the white dude, the annoying guy. He's not on the show anymore. I kind of didn't like him too much. Seem to ask a lot of stupid questions. Maybe, you know, didn't really know enough about what he was presenting, I felt.
There's a tint of something to make it contrast a bit more, maybe something reddish since the terrain is green, if it isn't too garish. Yeah, I, I first tried a little orangey kind of red on the stones, but I thought it was too, it, it like stood out too much. So I just mixed a bit of that orange into this tan color. Now these, keep in mind these bases, I'm not painting up all green and sludgy because I, I don't want them to be tied to the sewers per se. These ones I want to be reusable. So these are just kind of general rocky bases. Because these goblins, um, they could be used be used many times again. All right, so now that we've put those all off screen so that you can't see them, I'm bad at this. So we're not doing, going too crazy here with the uh, accents, come on. Just, you know, a couple of random stones to stand out, you know. Come on, focus buddy, focus. Yep, yeah. oh, there it is, you know. I mean, like, these are, these bases are just washers with sand glued to them. They ain't fabulous. Use some tape to outline the work area before you start the stream. You know what, I have told myself that I would do that almost every time I do this, and then I forget. I did, by the last stream, finally learn what the area was based on this square here, and I started to um, work in that area. But where this camera is versus the other one, the way it's focused, um, changed that. And so I had this habit of, of working down here where I naturally work, and then I learned to work more forward for the stream. But now this camera is actually, this camera is in my comfortable work area more. So I have to break my new habit. We'll get there. We'll get there, guys. Paper minis also aren't the most exciting thing to see top down because they're basically in, invisible from the top because they're so thin. Will, yeah, Will. Uh, Will is the annoying guy. Um, the Asian gentleman, I don't remember his name either. Will and... I can't believe I don't know their names. I've watched literally like 100 hours of that show. But anyway, the Asian guy is great. Um, I also really like the... The other guy that they've been working with a lot in his shop, the model maker guy, you know, does the shop tips. He's good. Um, and yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm also glad that a guy like Adam Savage is able to do what he has done. Just makes me feel like I failed. But that's just how I am. So, moving on, I mean, I'm happy that I got some people who will come hang out with me while I paint sand. Like, not everyone can say that. Okay, I'm going to try hitting these with a bit of a brown wash and I see how that looks. And if it ain't great, then I'll just do a black wash on it. I think the brown might look a little bit more grimy, which would be cool. Hey buddy, Demon Jester in the house, how's it going man?
I think now that I've been using washes more, I'm tempted to, not tempted, but I feel like I should put some more effort into making proper ones. You know, I basically just water down paint like crazy and add a little bit of dish soap, you know, a poor man's wash. Um, but I know there's much better ways to do it. Um, been tempted to try the uh, the furniture, the pledge, furniture polish pledge, whatever one. I use that instead of water. I just I don't have any, so I'd have to actually go and buy some, which is fine. I just gotta actually write down somewhere which is the right one to get, so that when I'm in a store, I get the right one. Norm, yeah, that's. Norm is the is the Asian dude that I like. He's great. The Asian American. I feel like this wash is too brown and it should actually have a little bit more black in it so that it looks more grimy, but I'm gonna do this first and then I'm gonna do a black one. I'm actually making it just look like real, like sand again, which I'm not sure is great. But one thing I've noticed about washes is that they rarely do more harm than good, and you can always just go over them again. Um, yeah, you are right, Cyrus. The work light lighting is lined up more in the uh, top left corner, like over here. Um, but that is just the nature of where I was able to mount the lights. Um, it's something I might actually change. But uh, like I mentioned in the stream before, I'm gearing up to completely renovate this room and turn it into a proper game room. And I'm going to set up this, redo this stuff here. So the uh, lighting and camera and stuff is staying where it is for the moment. But I think I can improve on it, definitely. I also, this webcam, like I have a holder that I made that holds that would hold my phone for recording video. Um, this webcam, you know, obviously is a totally different thing than the phone. So I just currently have it taped to that rig, but I will, I am gonna make a proper attachment for it. Uh, I just have to go pick up the correct screw uh, for like the tripod mount screw, which I've researched and is a quarter inch diameter, 20 thread per inch screw, which is probably like an M2 or something like that, which I can find. And anyway, uh, I'm gonna make a proper mount. Right now I just taped it temporarily to get this tested. So if you put a brown wash on this sand that's painted, it actually makes it just look like, kind of like the way the sand, play sand does before you paint it, which I'm not entirely thrilled about. So it's definitely gonna get hit with a, with a black. Okay, so um, just so you can see kind of how it looks. Definitely made it a little bit more, whoops, natural looking, but I'm not sure if it made it more good looking. 
This camera focuses in pretty good detail, but I can't figure out how to make it stay focused. Like, come on. Focus. Don't mind me, I'm just trying to learn. Oh, there we go. That's detail is pretty good. But I think the brown on the gray looks kind of subpar. Don't worry, I'm not washing the man shark. Man shark has got his his slime base. That's the man shark base. It's just the hot glue sludge. Future floor wax making Liquitex Floid. Yeah, the I don't know if the future floor wax is the same thing that I saw. The guy was making washes with it was a pledge floor stuff. So maybe it is the, the same thing. And he basically used that in place of water and it worked really well. It looked really nice. Basically, the cool thing was is that it like it allowed the paint to flow over everything and kind of slightly like he was, he was doing buildings like you know Warhammer kind of ruins and it allowed it to kind of stick to the flat sur stick over here stick to the flat surfaces and uh, and dry so that I don't know it's hard to explain but it it let the wash seep into the crevices really dark but also still cover everything a little bit. Okay, so I am going to get the black and we're going to tell the computer to remind me to tomorrow to do the restart it's trying to get me to do right now for an update. That would be a bad thing to do during a stream. And I'm going to go get myself a drink. And we're back. So I'm just going to drink a bottle of this Maple Shack. It's my go-to second beer lately. I don't really want to crack a big full pint at the moment. So I'll just do that. But I want to show you guys this. Because it's a beer that I'm pretty ha excited about, but it's probably not going to be on the stream because I bought this for game night. So this Saturday is the game where I will finally start using some of the sewer stuff. But there is a local brewery called Half Pints. This is a decent local brewery, but they also do a bunch of like special seasonal beers, and they got this one like. I don't even know how you said Hydrun's Sweet Mead. I'll, re I'll read you what it, what it says here. Um, this sweet sparkling mead pays homage to Norse mythology. Hedron the goat eats the foliage off a sacred tree in Valhalla and supplies the fallen warriors who reside there with an endless supply of the clearest mead for enjoyment. Our mead uses only the finest unpasteurized and unfiltered Manitoba wildflower honey. Manitoba is where I live. Um, it has a thick, sweet body with a crisp finish due to the sparkling carbonation. With age, Hydron's sweet mead will continue to prove its character for many years to come. So, 
I mean, how could I not get the beer that is made by Goat for Warriors in Valhalla for a night of D&D? Uh, I only got one, though, because this bottle of beer is $20. And Papa don't make $20 beer, beer money. Well, he makes, like, buy, like, one or two $20 beer kind of money, but not, like, a case of it. So I'm saving that for, uh, for game night. I'll let you guys know after if I remember how it is. Okay, so here we have my simple black wash. Actually, this black wash, I mixed in a bit of brown to it, which I found actually looked a bit nicer. Um, the main thing that I found is good about using washes is that I and many crafters based on the uh, pictures I see on the forum and stuff have a tendency to go too crazy with highlights. Um, it's one of those things like when you dry brush on your highlights, it's really exciting and it brings out all that detail. And a lot of time, you know, we'll end up putting in highlights that make things look like they're friggin' glowing, right? And you know, getting into like straight white highlights. And I myself made that mistake in the beginning. Um, so the wash is a nice way just to tone that down. Like you can still hit, hit everything with a really bright highlight to get those edges, but then the wash just kind of brings it down to reality a little bit more. I've also found that like on the, uh, like on the buildings I've been making, the wash is really nice for um, getting in some weathering and letting it pool under places that it naturally would on a building. So, Paper Mini is starting to, I've been manhandling it too much already. Feels loose. So one thing, the paper is definitely not an indestructible thing. But I do, after I'm done, uh, usually give these a few coats of like the uh, aerosol mod mod podge, or just some varnish or something, just just to uh, seal it up and stiffen the paper a bit. I mean, these minis I print out myself just on like regular cardstock that you can buy, like the 65 pound or whatever. But it's not ideal um, for my player characters minis. I actually had them printed at Staples because they, you know, obviously their printer is a lot higher resolution, but also it was done on a heavier cardstock and those ones are really nice. I would, I would absolutely pay the money to have all my paper minis printed there because it doesn't cost much but the inconvenience of it doesn't really work because I like to just like I decide I need something and I print it out and I make it immediately. And sometimes I print it out and realize I want it to look a little bit different. So I edit it, change the size and reprint it. But if I get it printed at Staples, I got to submit it and then I go pick it up the next day. So I am like just doing the laziest wash here. Warhammer guys are probably rolling in their, rolling their eyes at me right now. But that's how it looks now. Wow, this high definition camera really shows all my like Battle scars, eh? 
Remember you guys were worried that I cut myself, that I'd cut myself last time with a knife? And my hands are destroyed from my job. We'll see how this looks when it dries. But I think it looks okay. Totally serviceable. So it's goat piss. It's not goat piss. Like, I mean, that does kind of imply that that beer is goat piss. When you guys are talking about mediums, is that just something that you, you like? You just like mix it in to adjust the uh, glossiness. You mix it right in the craft paint. Doctor Faust Painting Clinic. Okay, I will remember that. I use spray primer for unpainted minis and such. Hmm. Those got to dry. What should we make? We gotta make something else. Um, I had the thought of. So I made these vats, right? And like these are basically supposed to be um, cesspool pipes coming out of the ground. But I feel like the sewer also needs some, you know, pipes vertically that are kind of pouring into the sewers so maybe I should make some of those you know we can use the same grading that I used on the bridges It'd be totally sweet I just need to I think I think I'll just make two it's probably enough because um, everything I do is very modular and I never set up full you guys know I don't set up big full dungeons I I do room design a la Hank I like to just keep things one area at a time so same thing I did for those vats, I used a piece of inch and a half ABS uh, plumbing pipe. I always ha I have lots of this stuff from work, which eventually I'm gonna use. I'm gonna actually make a sweet paint holder one of these days. Uh, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. But I use this as a template. Oh wait, so. We are going to trace out this circle here. And I should cut this shorter so I can trace inside easier, but I'm not going to do that right now. So that's that. That's going to be one of those. could just use these but I don't have I have a nice tool to cut this ABS pipe like it's like slips around it and it cuts it really clean and nice without mess but it's at work in my tool pouch so I'm not gonna do that but you could just use this pipe on its own to make these but these are going to be more like tilescapes style. Um, although, I don't know, man. There should be some actual length of pipe involved. I also don't know if I want them to be 
full circles or if they should be if I should cut them sorry I, I'm thinking out loud here and not finishing sentences I gotta think about how these are actually gonna sit on the game table I don't think I want them to just be full circles like that do I do I want to cut them like cut them flat at the bottom Or do we have, I don't know, man. I don't know. I know, what I do know is that I need to cut these out first and then we will go from there. So let's grab the scroll table. Could just use a knife to do this. But when you buy one of these, you might as well get your money's worth. Okay. So we are gonna cut this out. You guys can see that? Yeah, it's a little bit bright, but Cutting out, printing out a template as a guide would be a better way to do this, but I'm not that worried about this being perfectly smooth. Oh, that was a bad cut right there. That. It's okay. We can fix that. This also kind of shows you guys how I made those vats because I did those off camera in between doing other things. And they were highly improvised as well. So this kind of recaps the same idea. Oh man. I do not have a steady hand tonight. Don't worry, JP, wall of text is good. I may not catch it all while I'm working, but I'll check it out after. The more text, the better. That's why we did the uh, on-screen chat log. So, just still thinking out here. We have this. Now, remember that the uh, water waves are lower. How do I want these emptying? Do I want just a full um, do I want a full pipe here? Or do I want to cut it like so it sits flat? I really should just use this. Turn on the chop saw to cut this. It'll be really loud. And my kid is sleeping. I need some toilet paper rolls, is what I need. Um, what else do we got here? what happens when you make things that you weren't planning on making. Should I go like empty with some toilet paper? Just waste a whole roll to get the inner tube? I don't save those because I don't usually use them in my crafting too much. 
Um, I got something we got here. What do we got? You don't have anything. Do I not have anything that would work for this? I don't even think I have like cardboard on hand because I don't tend to make things out of cardboard. And some of this card stock. It's gonna be too be too stiff to Toilet paper roll is really the best answer. Hold on. Do I have some somewhere? No, I have not saved any. Cardstock. Well, let's just see if I can take this stiff cardstock and this is going to be too too stiff to wrap. Yeah, I, I don't know. I really should save a couple. I should go check the recycling bin. Yeah, this cardstock. I'm trying to use this. Um, this is a fat pack cardstock. It's too stiff for what I want to do here. Foam core kind of bends. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I can bend it on that kind of a radius, so... Hold on, I gotta check the recycling. All right, there was no, no, uh, TP or paper towel rolls in the recycling. However, there's some, uh, mac and cheese box that'll bend. I normally don't use that kind of stuff in my craft, but we're going to try it out. So if I just cut this into some strips here, I really tend to not use cardboard and cardstock in my craft very often, but sometimes that's what you got to do. So this stuff. I will be able to bend awkwardly. Um, I need this scroll table to go away, but I also need to use it right away, so. This could go around like that. This is going to be way too big. 
Um, I want this to be about as long no, this way. Just to be about two squares on a tile. Um, this has to move for a minute. Let's start out with an actually straight line here. And let's get the glue gun warming up. Yeah, Aaron, hey, good evening, man. Uh, I really appreciate your eye for quality in your build. I love all the crafters in the community, but sometimes wish more of them would make truly quality components. This is not me disparaging anyone, just appreciating your grades. Yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. I mean, I see stuff often that is thrown together, or whatever, and it, it totally works. Like, it's good enough, and it looks cool. Like, even Scotty's stuff, a lot of the things Scotty builds and the way he builds them, I would never do. I think they're awesome. And realistically, they're probably the appropriate way to build things that you're going to use once or twice for D&D. It's not like it's wargaming. However, my enjoyment for the craft like comes from making things that are truly nice. Um, I want stuff that when people have, if someone's over, right, and they happen to see some of the stuff I've built for the game, they may not know anything about D&D. But they can look at it and go, you know, that's a cool, that's that's a really neat item. Um, I like things that look good on a shelf, you know. That's like when I build all those foam core houses. They're not really super necessary for the game. I just enjoy them. So I try to make things of a decent quality. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not casting things and stuff. I'm still building stuff out of styrofoam, but... Usually, uh, there's a better material than cardboard. Sometimes cardboard is the right material. Sometimes it's the only material you have access to. And you know what? You can do amazing things with it. But I have access to other things, and I have time. So uh, try to make things nice. So these were originally going to be two different ones, but I think they are going to, together, one's going to be the front and one's going to be the back, because I think I'll need to stabilize this. It's going to be really hard for me to glue this on to both of them at the same time, I think, though, so I'll do one. I want to pre-cut this to length, which is, this is really awkward, guys. But we're going to do it. So. Let's just see. If this doesn't work out, which oftentimes the first try doesn't work out, it's not a big deal. I'm not in a... I don't... I don't totally need these for the game. Okay, we're just going to glue a bit at a time here. And we have to do the really fun thing of holding it while the glue dries. Good chance to look at the comments. You guys are talking about different me gel mediums and gloss mediums and stuff. Is that something you got to buy from like from GW from like the hobby store or like Michael sells that stuff and if so what section of Michael's is it in okay so far so good there's a little bit more in there probably 
probably get away with this whole thing. Here goes nothing. So I'm gluing one side of this and then hoping that I can fit the circle on the other side. Can't you do it while it's on its side? I don't know what you mean. Okay, so we got, we got one done up here, one end. I am going to, oh man, what happened there? This is what this is, see this is bad crafting. I wasn't paying attention and I cut something really wrong. That's okay. We will fix it. I'm just gonna glue the seam together from the inside. And this one will go in here. I want to cut out this ring though. And I think I need to, okay, what I, what I want to accomplish here is I want to have a, like a, a layered ring like this. So on this one, I'm going to cut out this inner ring. And then I also am going to cut out a second one of the same size to put it behind it so that you don't see into the pipe. So that's why I didn't totally put away the uh, scroll table. Let's first cut out the other circle. I think I'm just going to end up making one of these tonight. And what's probably going to happen is I'm going to reflect on it later and realize a better way to build it. And then I'm going to make new ones. <laughs> So the nice thing about foam, styrofoam, is you can sand it much like wood. So that's why I wasn't too worried about having a really smooth cut on the scroll table. So I'm just going to copy this. So I want another one that's the same size. I'm going to set that up so that it's really hard to set this up so that the um, the arm isn't in the way here. any of you happen to have one of these scroll tables, a nice trick when you're doing stuff like this is to cut out the exact thing you want on paper first, glue it to the styrofoam, and then it acts as a guide. The hot wire won't cut through the paper, so you get a perfect cut. And that's what I would do on things that are, that are really crucial. We are going to now take both of these pieces together and sand them at the same time. Basically, this is acting like a router guide so that they both end up the same. So now we got two circles that are the same. I want to cut out the uh, the inner circle from this one. So what we actually do is take the wire off the uh, scroll table 
and cut. I don't want to do this on the scroll table. I'm doing it on my cutting pad. You could obviously just do this with an X-Acto knife, but like I said, if you have a scroll table, you might as well use it. So now, take the wire, feed it through a hole, reattach it, and now we can cut out a um, inner circle. It's kind of excessive. But this so way there's no split, no seam, which all helps aiding in the illusion of what you're trying to make. Okay, pop that back off, pop it out, put that back, unplug this thing, because I think that's it for that. Seriously, I love that, I love that table. And I'm gonna give the inside a bit of a sand, which is probably gonna be difficult to do with that big one. We'll use the small one. Just cause like my cut is kind of wavy, so. Try not to break it. I'm gonna break the edge a little bit. Good enough. And now, put that on there. Should yeah. see you always think of it once the glue's already on. I should have put that grating in here first. It's okay. I can uh, cut it out. You can find it, Michael's. You just need to go to the section where they sell the artsy paints. Okay, yeah, the other side of the store where the more expensive stuff is. Okay. Uh, I will take a look at that. I'm assuming this is one of those things, though, that a look like it, you buy some and it goes a long way as long as you're not wasteful with it. Um, yeah, I don't think D and D players are expecting the same kind of caliber of stuff as war gamers. Uh, however, two of the guys that sit at my table are longtime. Uh, Warhammer players, they paint beautiful minis, so I like to, I don't like myself looking crappy. Also, I've set a certain standard with my players that they kind of expect top-notch stuff, so. Yeah, and, and I think most of my guys would, uh, would be fine with some theater of the mind, too. Like, I mostly just use terrain uh, to let everyone know where they are like, but why not dress it up a bit? Um, okay, so this, see something's funny, acting funny here, where this is not tight enough. Um, also, uh, check out Mini Train Domain. Oh yeah, I'm well aware of Jacob's channel. Uh, me and Jacob talk a lot offline about the craft and various things so but anyone else that isn't familiar with mini terrain domain it's a fantastic channel so how am i going to do this i don't want to see i can already tell that i'm accidentally pushing it in too far <laughs> i don't want that to happen when i'm gluing it so i think if i glue it and then push it down here 
правой. So the other reason I don't like using materials like cardboard and stuff is that they're usually so like flimsy and awkward to work with and it's hard to do things nicely with them. But I think the reality is that this is a prototype so I can be a little bit less pretty with it. Okay, so it's not not bad. Now before we proceed, let's think about again how this is actually gonna mechanically work on the train. So it's gonna go like that. I feel like I need something I need something flat so it doesn't, I, I, we don't want that, right? So thinking of just a pop, like a tongue depressor, like a big popsicle stick to give it a bit of a base. Um, so let's see how this, works here. So you're just going to take one of these thumb depressors, I think, and glue it on the bottom so that it sits flat. Unfortunately, you're going to see that. I don't, I don't like that. I don't want you to be able to see it. Oh, uh, Jester, yeah, I did get the questions. Um, as usual, I read them while I was on a job site at work and thought about some responses, and then I didn't respond. There's one question I want clarity, clarification on before we do it, and then we will set that up. At least for my table, the difference is when role playing is happening, people are impressed when the polystyrene train comes out. Yeah, exactly. Um, I always say too, like if I totally botched the night as a DM and things don't go as smoothly as I had planned, at the very least, there was some really cool stuff on the table. Like good terrain will not save a bad game of D&D. &D. But it doesn't hurt, that's for sure. Oh, Alan, what's up, man? You must have known it was a random weekday night, which means there was a chance that I was streaming. I think I'm like developing an addiction to uh, streaming. It's fun, man. Like, it makes crafting a lot more interesting. All right, so I'm going to glue this on, and I'm going to see how it sits. If it sits nicely, great, because it also closes this uh, seam in the cardboard up. And if it doesn't work well, then I can very easily pop it off. So, let's see how this sits. That makes it sit quite nicely, actually. So there's a few things I want to do. One is the grate. I want to do some banding on this to make it look more metallic. First thing we're going to do is the grill. Uh, so I'm just going to I'm going to use a brown tool for the job. I'm going to pop this off here. Um, I need a silver Sharpie. <laughs> I want this to fit pretty nicely in here, so... 
There's not really a good way to mark this out. Pencil's not working. Um, see if I can score it like this. Barely see my score line there, but alternatively, I could do something with toothpicks. Uh, speaking of mini terrain domain earlier, he actually made man, I should have watched that video. He made these, he made basically, he has a tutorial on basically these exact same things. I don't remember how he did it. I do remember that he used like something more like toothpicks for, for this part of it, but I should have just watched that. Oh. I like to do things my own way. Even if it's not better. So we're almost fitting in there. I'm gonna take a time with this because I don't want it to, to accidentally cut it too small. Okay. So that fits in there so tight that I don't think I can actually get it out now. Oh, maybe. What I want to do is uh, goop some hot glue in here and let it ooze out a bit. This is where I definitely burn my fingers. Uh, let's just use this. Getting hot glue all over the new blade. We're gonna pour this out, get this all gross. This is gonna be really hard to paint, isn't it? Like to have like the grill and ooze separating. Like it's gonna be tough. I'm not I'm not that good of a painter, so I think I, I could have a hard time with this. Um, I think it would be really neat if I had enough, some of this glue or hot glue kind of pour down like further past this so that it would dip right into the water. But then I think it will not sit nicely otherwise. Let's just see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this. Can you guys see that? I'm gonna try to. Ah, I don't wanna. I need this to cool down. Oh man, uh, I got a back scroll on the chat. Never ask what that stain is. Yeah. This hot glue, I am not patient enough to let this dry. I'm sure you can figure out what I was trying to do here to have a little runoff dry up, but I am not patient enough. Um, yes, I will put some hot glue on, yeah. JP is right. 
this tongue depressor is now going to get hot glued on the seam and it will just look like a weld. You need a glue stick. I like that. So if you see it, it'll just look like a weld. Yep, Alan, sewer session starts this Saturday. So that's what all this work is for. However, I, I kind of, based on the, uh, the games that uh, Absolute Tabletop ran, online which I watched if my players happen to role play as much as them they may not even enter the sewer uh, in the first night like those guys basically ended the first session at the entrance so because there's a lot of like town role play to to do my group is not as role play heavy as those guys are but it's definitely possible that they don't get into the sewer the first night or they get in and have one encounter but I think a lot of the cool stuff will take some time before they get to it like next session yep new webcam bud can you tell a difference even if not it's not a big deal the important thing is that the webcam has not cut out we had one uh, dropout which was the fault of my laptop's power cord not being plugged in properly. Yeah, use wax paper. So I know what you're saying, use wax paper for the spill. And I think it would be really cool. The thing is, I like to display stuff on a shelf after and if it's hanging down past this bottom piece, then um, it won't sit nicely when it's not raised up here. So we just got some bit of gnarly glue there. I think that'll be enough to represent the spill. Um, but yes, wax paper would be the way to do it. Um, I had to clean this edge up a bit here. It's overhanging in spots where it shouldn't. And then I want to do some banding on this to give it a more industrial look. So do I have any cardstock, like paper? I don't think so. I have a garbage can full of beer, beer cans. So I guess I can just use this, uh, the same mac and cheese container that I was already using. It's not so heavy that I can't use it. What I would probably normally do is I have a like a nice paper cutter that I use for various things, but it's upstairs. That would be a good way to cut banding in uniform strips. That. I think this can be almost a quarter inch wide. And now this can get glued on like this. Uh, best way to glue this on trying to think the best way to glue this. Um, hot glue is going to be too messy. 
Um, white glue is going to be too slow. I don't know if super glue is going to hold. I'm going to see if super glue holds. I don't know if it will though. And yes, Alan, the smart thing would have been to actually paint the grill and everything first. And then put the uh, spill out. I still may end up painting the, this thing out and then adding more goop afterwards for that same reason. This is probably not going to work here. Probably just glue my fingers to it. I have no idea what's going on in the chat now, but we're talking about closets in the catacombs. So it's all good, man. It's all good. I and players encountered some closets once at a farm. It was being attacked by them. It was a fun night. Much fear was had by all. Yeah, I'm painting the sludge, so it might not matter. But again, I can always add more if I need to. Oh, okay, so we got this here like that. And that can also fit in there if I want that to work that way. I think we do another band. Quick, answer me this, fellow crafters. What's a way I could put rivets on stuff like this? I know I've seen people use... Um, if they're making stuff out of plastic card, which is something I would like to start doing, if I could find some, uh, they use a little, it's like a little punch, and it, uh, it dents the plastic and makes a little bump that looks like a rivet, and it looks awesome, but I don't have a little punch to do that with. So... Do you guys have a way to make uh, little rivets in cardstock? Quasi familiar? That shit's crazy. That seems super fun. How late am I, Joseph? Well, better late than never. We're well ways into this. We're past our initial project, and we're now at the point in the night where I decide to just build something random while I got you all here hanging out. So, But it's not over yet, so you're good. Also, for the record, super glue seems to be working fine for this. I'm just using some hot glue at the ends. So 
small tiny fake rhinestones yeah I have gems little gems that I've used for treasure I wonder if they are if I have any small enough cut the tips off rice grains oh I think nobody got time for that sift your sand get larger part no I need something that I can do right now I'm impatient Lots of glue or clay putty. No, guys. I need something that's easy that I can do right now and looks perfect. Tiny rhinestones is probably the ideal. Thing. Um, hold on. Let me see if the ones I have are small enough. Oh, you know what? We actually... These ones I got here for my treasure piles are probably a good size. Ugh, these tweezers are shitty. Somebody send me some quality tweezers. Uh, you know what? Okay, fine. We'll just pour. I f oh, yeah, yeah. The scale of this is, of these is probably perfect. I just got to figure out how the hell I'm actually going to get them all on there evenly. Yeah. It's about the right size. You can probably kind of see it right there. Puff paint. I do have puff paint. I feel like I would not be accurate enough with it. I also, so I got this puff paint that I used on some bushes because uh, John from Dungeons and Glue Sticks did the sweet thing with his bushes where he used pop, puff paint to do berries or fruit on them, and it looked really cool, so I did that. Uh, but I noticed that after a while, like a week or two later, the puff paint totally uh, started to deflate. Yeah, plaster, okay, so you know what? I am a few drinks in here and getting impatient. So what I'm gonna do is I am just going to take some of this tacky glue and I'm going to smear it all along this edge here. And I'm just going to start dropping some rivets on. Try not to do this too messily. You know what, why are we using that? Just use your finger, it'll be way easier. The tiny rivets is definitely more of a Sunday afternoon with a coffee task, not a Monday night three beers in task. But so let that sit like that. Got one rivet there. Hopefully these hold. Um, I'm sure as long as they hold for a bit. Once I paint, spray paint, and uh, then finish with a varnish. These probably won't fall off, hopefully. Oh man, these are too small to deal with. But it seems to be working.
Yeah, uh, I actually have a set of jewelers tools high on my list of things to buy. I'm just always concerned that I'm going to get them and they're going to be crappy. So like I need a set that somebody recommends because I hate buying crappy tools. Uh, on the plus side, these seem to be going on nicely and easily and the tacky glue seems to be working pretty well. So we've made a very festive looking thing here. It's going to look absolutely ridiculous until it's black bombed. I used to build terrain for games workshops. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming the pay is not great, but that would be fun. Like you built stuff for uh, that they would use in their stores. Ah, oh, tacky is gonna come up. I've had a few moments where I've thought, hey, I should make some terrain for sale or like commission some stuff because you know that's the thing people do. And then I realized that one, I would have to step up my game like crazy if I was charging money for it, which I think I'm capable of. But the amount of time versus what people would be willing to pay, I don't think it'd be worth it. I have too good of a career to spend my time trying to make money doing this. So, like people have asked me if they could buy some of my foam core buildings, like if I do commission, but there's no way I could sell those because the price I'd have to sell them for to make it worth it, I don't think anyone would want to pay. And I'd want to end up keeping them all, I think. Because I'd want to always make something different. And then I'd want to keep them. This would be a little bit easier if all these rhinestones hadn't fallen out upside down on the table. I have to delicately flip them first. I have a feeling this thing's going to look pretty neat once it's painted. Ugh. Come on. Son of a bitch. I got a bad case of glue gun covered sticky fingers here. Makes it hard to do this kind of stuff. Okay, good. Front and back. What else does this thing need, guys? Is this thing ready for uh, for a coat of black? Too messy, it's sewer pipes. Bung wires, what's up, bro? A 
It's going to go like that. Try to get some of these rhinestones back in this case. Now I feel like I should have done some of these little rivet rhinestone things on the on the vats, but they are already all nicely painted up and varnished, so I am not going to go back to them. Hello, Eric. It needs to come back. Now, I really wish I could go and just spray paint this right now, but there is some styrofoam here that will definitely melt if I do that. So, I think. I'm going to hit it with some white glue and then spray bomb it tomorrow. Or today, depending on how long we hang out for. Um, normally, I am of the mentality that if you're going to go through the effort of brushing on white glue to protect something so that you can spray paint it, you should have just painted it by brush with black. But uh, something like this where I want the spray paint to kind of seal everything up and hold stuff down, I don't want to... Uh, just put black with black craft paint on it. I want it to be real spray paint. That was a bad idea putting that on all those grates though. I'm gonna have to pop out the surf. I'm rambling, uh, putting the white glue filled up all these little grates. Come on, focus. There we go. I don't really want that, so I'm going to have to break the tension a bit. That's not really working. So whatever, maybe we just leave it like that. Yeah, I, th I think these gems are actually going to hold pretty good, to be honest with you. Going to spray paint it. Going to paint it. And then I'm going to seal it with varnish. But you know, it wouldn't hurt. Just see, maybe get some glue in and around on this whole thing here. Actually, don't mind the idea either of getting some glue brush marks on this flat bit of cardboard just to give it a bit more texture. And what did I say before? I need to get a heat gun or a blow dryer for live streams. Right now, I wish I had that. So I would love to spray bomb this immediately. Uh, last thing is there's a little bit 
of a gap here where something went nasty. So we're going to fill that up with some hot glue, which actually might be what caused the gap. I might have melted it. There, one glittery sticky mess. Night Lex, thanks for joining us. Hope to see you next time. DM Tactics, what's up, bud? Yes, I did see Hank's sculpted black dragon, and it was sweet. Just catching up on some of your chat here. What I built tonight, uh, the actual beginning of the night was I was just painting out all these bases of these paper minis that I put together last time so nothing too exciting just painting those bases yeah okay when I dry brush I will definitely be careful and then I will be sure to uh, seal everything up afterwards Thirty-four cobalt built and base for us to paint next week. Awesome! That sounds like a super fun family project. Pretty sure Ninja, otherwise known as Alan, uh, uses legit minis. So we need that. Fucker to dry so we can spray paint. And let's hope that this stream doesn't get stuck in a friggin' processing loop like the last one. Clean up some of these brushes a little bit so I don't leave them overnight and regret it. I really dislike having a messy work area, so I find myself having to clean things up mid project often. Okay, right, well, it looks like I'm out of things to make for tonight and it's getting late so I should probably hit the hay get ready for get a good night's sleep for work and uh, tomorrow we'll see uh, I need to I need to paint this bad boy up it won't take that long to do so I don't know if I'm gonna stream that I think this week the time that I have to work on stuff I need to do on proper DM prep work, um, getting my tome ready, 
getting all my NPCs sorted out. I'm not used to running for modules, especially ones that have a whole bunch of NPCs and politics and whatever going on. I usually have pretty simple concepts in my game and it's my own world, so it's easier. But this time I think I have to actually do some learning.